right. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I pray you all have had a wonderful uh, Friday. Amen. I'm at home just relaxing. Just had a periscope session with Bishop Judy Anderson trying to hook her up with getting acclimated to Periscope. And so I truly do appreciate those of you all that are taking a moment to actually join me for a few on tonight. Angelita, I saw you come into the room. It's good to have you. Amen. You have been faithful and consistent as far as when I actually do these scopes and it's something that I don't take lightly. Uh, some people that <clears throat> excuse me, are a part of the church that I pastor. Uh, as a matter of fact, I pastor Nothing But The Truth Ministries, uh, located in Clinton, Maryland. Uh, truth is an acronym that stands for Total Reliance Upon the Holy Spirit. And so again, I pastor that church. I've been pastoring for 12 years. In November, we celebrated 12 years. Love you too. And so <clears throat> some of those at my church, they've heard me teach on uh, the subject is of love languages and relationships and things of that nature. I'm a person I love to teach. Uh, my mother reached out to me. She said, what's going on with you? You on Periscope again tonight? I said, yep, because if people are hungry and thirsty, then guess what? I don't mind teaching. I love teaching. Amen. I love helping people to become better. I love helping relationships to come better. Amen. Bless the Lord, Yvette. Um, I teach on all subjects. I haven't uh, actually been on here teaching on all the gifts, but I teach on all the gifts. If you ever wanted to see YouTube, I teach on motivational, the manifestation gifts. I teach on the five-fold ministry gifts. I am a person that has a broad range of what it is that I actually teach. And so tonight I want to talk about relationships. Amen. Welcome, Mommy. I see that you joined us. But I want to talk about relationships. A lot of times people want to get in relationships because they get lonely and things of that nature. But for real, they don't understand all of the work that goes into a relationship. Welcome, God's girl. And so one thing about relationships are hard work. Amen. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, be, be careful on the road. Amen. And so, amen. You said I'm an awesome teacher just like my mother. Yes, teacher folks, she is the bomb. And so relationships are hard work. I'm actually in the process of writing my second book. Amen. Can I just shout out for a minute? My publisher, Anointed Press Graphics, uh, she publishes a lot of different uh, authors. Amen. And a lot of the stuff that she published for us is on Amazon. So when people go through Amazon, through her company or through her website and things of that nature to purchase mater materials, some of the books from the authors, at the end of the year, she tallies up everything. And guess what? For two years in a row, I had the highest Kindle sales for my book, Why Do I Keep Falling? <laughs> you say, hello, Lord Jesus, you funny, mom. But yes, y'all, I was number one in the Kindle sales for my book, Why Do I Keep Falling, uh, through Anointed Press Graphic on Amazon. Amen. And so I'm truly thankful for that. Uh, I'm working on a second book that is for relationships, and it's called Why Do You... So You Think You Want to Get Married. And so tonight, we're going to talk about relationships. Amen. Because relationships, as I said before, they are hard work. 24-7, 365 days a year, seven days a week, holidays, weekends, overtime, you name it. You don't get a break. And the only way that you're going to have a successful relationship is if you are willing to put in the work. And so it takes a lot of hard work to have a good relationship, especially, you know, when you're dealing with, you say, shout out to Karen Presley. Oh, she didn't join us tonight. Oh, her, her, her company. I got you. Uh, but... You have to be willing to put in the hard work, amen, in order to have a good relationship with anybody. Not just in a male-female uh, relationship, but to have a good relationship with your children, you know, your family members, your co-workers, everybody. You have to be willing to put in the work. And so a lot of relationships dissolve or never ever develop because people are not willing to put in the work that is required to make it successful. Amen. Again, the work never ceases. I don't care if you've been with somebody for 50 years, the work never ceases. And in order to be successful, you have to continually work at it. 
And so a lot of people want to be in relationships and by nature, we are individuals that want to be loved. Amen. We want to love individuals and we want to be loved. But guess what? How many of y'all know many of us struggle with showing love to other people? Sometimes we struggle with receiving love from other people, especially if we don't love ourselves. Now, can I just be for real? If you don't love yourself, how can you really expect somebody else to love you and you don't love yourself? See, if you're a person with struggling with loving yourself, I would strongly suggest that you work on you before trying to get into a relationship with somebody else. And we often have a struggle with expressing to somebody the type of love that we actually need. We have a tendency to do to somebody else what we want done to us, and that does not work in the love relationships. Amen? And so... Loving people, you know, amen, that's right. You got to work on you. Working on you will cause you to be a better you and uh, uh, people will be able to love you and embrace you even more when you work on you. And so loving people requires one to stop being selfish. We can't be selfish if we're really going to love people effectively, amen? Uh, selfish people are only concerned with themselves. And the word of God tells us in, in Philippians chapter 2 verse 4, it says, Let each one of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others, amen? And so everybody has a love language. I'm going to be talking about love languages on tonight. Everybody has a love language. Uh, so if you had a particular love language or two when you was younger, guess what? That same love language is with you when you get older. It's just expressed different, but it is the same love language. And so it is so important to know an individual's love language so that you can communicate properly with them. Not knowing the person that you are with, love language will cause so much frustration in a relationship. And again, my focus tonight is on your relationships with your significant other. Amen. Or who God is going to eventually connect you with, with your husband or the person that you're currently dating. You know, the bottom line is if you don't know the person that you're with love language and they don't know yours, it's going to cause major frustration, especially if you are not getting your needs met. And so think about it. Just imagine this for a minute. Two people that are trying to communicate with each other and one of the individuals speaks French and the other person speaks English. Amen. And so trying to interact with each other will be frustrating if they both are talking in their native language, but yet they don't understand each other. Amen. And so in the spirit, people of God, we need to be bilingual. See, if you got two people together, one is French and one is English, the only way that relationship will ever be able to be effective is if they both were able to understand each other's language. So spiritually speaking, we need to be bilingual, amen? We need to know our own love language and we need to know the love language of the person that we are actually with. And so me and my husband, we dated for four years before we got married. And uh, we had a lot of arguments in the beginning because I would be frustrated because he would be so frustrated, um, you know, and I couldn't understand what the problem was. But every time you turn around, we was fussing and we was fussing and we was fussing. And he kept on telling me that I never spent time with him. And I could not understand that because we literally saw each other every day. So for him to say I never spent any time with him and we saw each other every day for hours on, on in a day, I was lost. I didn't understand it. And so we didn't know what was wrong until we discovered our love languages. Amen. Once we discovered our love languages, guess what? It changed our relationship altogether. And one of the books that actually helped us was this book right here. The Five Love Languages by Dr. Gary Chapman. An awesome, awesome book. I recommend any couple uh, to get this book. And so, um, you know, love language is something that we deal with. And so an empty love tank will frustrate you. It will cause you to, to just want to throw in a towel. And when you think about it, your love tank needs to be full. Amen. Welcome, Lady Dockery. And so if you have a love tank... And it's empty. Oftentimes when individuals get caught up in adulterous relationships, 
It's often because their love tank is empty. Most relationships don't start with sexual acts. Amen. Usually it's because somebody on your job, for instance, may give you the conversation that you so richly desire from your spouse at home, but you're never getting it. You desire for somebody to speak words of affirmation to you, but your spouse never affirms you. Your spouse never encourages you. So all of a sudden you got this coworker on your job and they begin to say those things that really mean a lot to you. So it does something to you. It causes you to grab. The problem is the wrong person is filling your love tank. It should be your spouse, but the wrong person is filling it. And so oftentimes when your tank is empty, it's going to affect how you function. Just think about a gas tank for instance. When you get to the gas station and you fill your gas tank up, guess what? You can drive, you can keep on driving and keep on driving. But how many of you know eventually, if you don't stop, at another gas tank. Eventually the car is going to stop running. You're going to find yourself stranded on the side of the road because of an empty tank. And the only way that you will be able to get that vehicle to run properly is if you put some more gas in it. So in our relationships, when our tanks begin to get low, our spouse should have the responsibility of filling it up, putting more gas into our love tank. Because if our love tank is empty, guess what? It's going to be some things in that relationship that's going to be stalled. That relationship and that person is not going to function the way they should. And so the love languages, there are actually five love languages. Words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Of course, I will not get to all of this tonight, amen, but um, eventually I will through a couple of parts. And so um, I want to talk about relationships again. A lot of relationships start off wrong. We do things so backwards, amen, because a lot of us, we get into relationships before even getting to know Christ. And so the way we start relationships when we are carnal and worldly and some of us that are still saved, we do it like this. But we get into the relationship, we meet somebody, they like us, we like them, we exchange numbers. Next thing you know, we have sex with them because that's what we do. We have sex with them. Then after we have sex with them, then we're trying to see if this relationship is really going to go anywhere. Bless you, Pastor Mike.